Hello and welcome back everyone. We are on day 24 of our 33 day consecration, 33 days to greater glory, a total consecration to the Heavenly Father through Jesus based on the Gospel of St. John. Today we are reading about Mary Magdalene and John chapter 20 verses 1 through 18. And let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. And the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went out and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Author's Commentary Standing by the foot of the cross of Jesus, John tells us, among other faithful women, was Mary Magdalene. And who was that? In the Gospel of Mark, we learn that she's the one out of whom Jesus cast seven demons. Some also believe that she's the one who washed the feet of Jesus in the house of Simon the Pharisee in the Gospel of Luke, the one about whom Jesus said she loved much. Whether Mary Magdalene is that woman, we do not know. But here's what we do know. She loved Jesus much, very much. How do we know this? Because again, Mary was there at the cross. While all of the apostles except John fled from Jesus' crucifixion out of fear, Mary Magdalene went to the cross without any fear. For there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. We also see Mary's love for Jesus and the fact that she went to his tomb early on Sunday morning while it was still dark. And she wasn't just quietly visiting there. Rather, she was weeping beside herself with grief at the loss of the one whom she loved. Reflecting on her tears, we can certainly take what John had said of Jesus as he wept for Lazarus and apply it to her. See how she loved him. Now as Mary was there at the tomb, weeping in the darkness, she suddenly realised that the stone 
that had blocked the entrance had been taken away. So immediately she ran, another sign of her love, and went to tell Peter and John. With her eyes still puffy from crying, and probably with desperation in her voice, she pleaded with the men. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Hearing this, Peter and John ran to the tomb, went inside, and saw that the body of Jesus was no longer there. Then, filled with exuberant joy, they ran throughout Jerusalem, proclaiming the good news that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Well, no, that's not what they did. Instead, they simply went home. Why? Because as John writes, as yet they did not know the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Meanwhile, Mary Magdalene stayed at the tomb weeping, and so her love seems to be even greater than that of John. As she wept, she suddenly noticed two angels in the tomb where Jesus' body had been. The angels then said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Now let's reflect on that for a moment. The angels, who by nature far surpass human beings in beauty and greatness, well known what God has done for us in Christ. They know the Lord has raised humanity by grace even higher than the angels, bringing us into the very nature of God. And so these angels are probably marvelling at the divine mercy shown to humanity in the tomb. It's no wonder then that they ask Mary, why are you weeping? It's as if they wanted to say, don't you have any idea what God has done for you? Poor little creature, you should be rejoicing. You now stand at the summit of creation with the resurrected Lord. But they don't say that, because Jesus suddenly appears and he too says to Mary, Woman, why are you weeping? But he also adds, Whom do you seek? Mary is so distraught that she doesn't recognise Jesus, and she's thought nothing of the fact that she's just seen two angels. All she seems to want is to be left alone with what's left of her Lord. And now th the beasts who took his life have even taken away his body. The apostles have done nothing. They don't seem to care, which increases Mary's anguish. She just wants Jesus' body back so she can grieve in peace. She asks the Lord, whom she still does not recognise, whether he's removed the body. If so, she'll take it away. Whom then does Mary seek? She doesn't seek a someone, but a body, a corpse, because the one she loves is dead. While she certainly has no faith, she nevertheless has deep, very deep love. But the Lord's love for Mary is much deeper Imagine how precious she is to him, this loyal woman whose love not only brought her to the cross but now brings her to the tomb. And where are the men? Where are the apostles? There's only this poor woman. The sight of such a devout disciple moves Jesus to tenderly call her by name, Mary. Hearing her name, this woman who's so filled with love responds to love. Being a meek little lamb, she knows the voice of her shepherd, the good shepherd, the one who gave his life for his sheep. Hearing her name, she also recognises Jesus as the one who says, according to Isaiah, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. It seems this is what Jesus is saying to Mary in calling her by name. He's subtly announcing the triumph of his resurrection that overcomes sadness and fear and makes her and us truly belong to him. Now Mary's response to Jesus is also filled with meaning. Of all the things she should say to him, she addresses him as Rabbani, which means teacher. For he is the true teacher, the one who gives the gift of truth, the one who is truth, and the one who will now give the fullness of truth. After telling Mary not to 
hold on to him. She was probably weeping and hugging him. He tells her why. It's because he's not the end, rather his father is the end. Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. And when he proceeds to bear witness to the truth, the truth for which he was born and came into the world, the fullness of truth, go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Right, here is the Gospel, the good news, the truth that Jesus came to announce. Right here is the moment that Jesus referred to in the upper room when he said to the Father, I have made known to them thy name, and I will make it known. Right here is when he makes thy name known. Right here is the Easter proclamation, the Father. Fittingly then, having accomplished the work the Father gave him to do, having now given those who receive him the power to become children of God, Jesus says to Mary, Go to my brothers. This is the first time in the Gospel of John that Jesus refers to the disciples as his brothers. That's because before they weren't, but now after Jesus' suffering, death and resurrection, they are. The blood of the risen Christ has made them such, and now they have the same Father. We have the same Father, God. Still, Jesus makes a distinction. He says, My Father and your Father. That is, we are all sons and daughters in the Son. We only call God our Father through the gift of being in the Eternal Son. But why does Jesus call the Father my God? Isn't Jesus also God? Yes, of course. But the Father is his God in the sense that Jesus knows that everything he has including his divinity, is a gift from the Father. He knows the goodness and humility of the Father, who, as he loves, gives everything without holding anything back, such that the Son is equal to the Father. And the Son has now done what the Father does for him. He has loved us without holding anything back, thus giving us his Father as our Father, as we live in him as sons and daughters in the Son. Hearing Jesus' words then, the woman who loved much, very much, did as she was told. She went to the apostles as the apostle to the apostles and declared to them, I have seen the Lord. She then announced the good news that God is our Father and we are now brothers and sisters in loving communion with Christ. Alleluia. Today's prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for making the Father's name known to me so that, so that the love with which he has loved you is now in me and I in you. Amen.